What is CSS? Hey everyone, Garth Schulte from CBT Nuggets. In this micro nugget, we're going to answer the question, what is CSS? Well, it stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And what it does for us is it allows us to present and display and position all of the elements within our HTML pages. CSS is awesome for a couple of reasons. The reason it caught on so fast and why it became so popular is because it separated structure from content and presentation. And that made it very attractive because it made it easy to work with. On top of that, CSS itself isn't really a programming language. It's not intimidating. It's so easy to learn and work with once you understand the basics of how selectors work and how to how everything maps between our CSS styles and our HTML structure. It just all becomes very straightforward and clear and anybody can learn it in a very short amount of time. Let's get some examples going so we can see how life looks with and without CSS and then how we can use CSS and HTML together to create some sweet looking websites. Now this is an example straight out of our 70-480 CBT Nugget series in which we learn about HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS3. So what we do is we take this page here. This is all HTML5. It's just a big pile of unstyled HTML5. We have a nav here, we have a section here, and then we have a bunch of articles within that section. And there's more that goes down as you can see here, but looking at the CSS styled version, here's our nav, here's our section, Here's all of our articles. And then over here, we also have what's called an aside. We've got an image up here, and then we've got another little uh, section up there. And we've also got a header. All of this here is a header. So what, what CSS does, once we CSS this up, it does all of our positioning. So notice here that uh, it allows us to, to put everything where we want it to go. Also the styling. You can see it looks kind of cool. We've got a lot of cool stuff here, especially with CSS3, the new version of CSS. We can do a lot of stuff here like rounded corners, drop shadows. So it's really easy to do animations. If you hold your mouse over any one of these, a menu drops down and, uh, and all kinds of really cool stuff. But those are by far going to be the most popular things to do with CSS. And it's very simple to do, to position, even to get them pixel perfect, which, you know, takes a little bit of effort. But CSS makes it a lot easier than it used to be. So positioning, styling, animations, and transitions are, are really going to be the big things that you do with CSS. The separation of structure and presentation is really what's extremely attractive with CSS because now we have our pile of HTML in its own file. We have our pile of CSS in its own file, and the browser marries them up together. And we're going to be in control of how it marries them up by tagging our HTML with IDs and classes and, and then referencing them by using what are called selectors inside of our CSS. Let's see how that works. So here it is. Here's our rendered HTML with no style. Underneath that is our pile of HTML. We're using HTML5 here. That's uh, also known as the DOM. The live version of our HTML pile is called the DOM, the document object model. So if we need to work with anything dynamically from JavaScript, we search this DOM to do things with. Over here on the right, this is our CSS. So this would be our CSS file, which we would then reference in the header of our HTML. So that would point the HTML to use this style uh, sheet. And then it's just a matter of defining our selectors and our styles. So our selectors is what tells the browser, hey, apply this style to this element. And there's a couple of ways to do it. One of them, the, the three most popular ways here anyway, is using the class. We have here we have the dot menu class. The dot tells CSS that this is a class. The menu is the name. And if we look over here in our HTML, look for a class equals menu, there it is. So the browser is going to see that. It's going to tie the two together. And it's going to result in this unordered list here having a height of 40, which it does, having a width of 100%, which will take up the whole page, having a margin. So here's where we're just specifying our positioning. Then we're specifying some styling. We're giving it the background color here of of uh, dark blue and then we're also putting a gradient on top of that so it's, it'll give us this gradient look from top to bottom then we also make it look a little fancy by giving it a border radius and a box shadow is that uh, with this color right here is that light blue box shadow color that's it so that's a class selector we also have an id selector now a class applies to many things because you can have many things with a class so it's a good way of doing multiple styling multiple elements in one shot an id you can only have one thing with an id like here we have our audio section uh here as an id we also have content stories 
but the one we're looking at here is our sidebar. See this? So we say a side, anything that's, that, that is the a side element and also has an ID of sidebar, then we're going to apply these styles to. Here's our width, 230. We're floating it to the right of the page. As you saw in the previous whiteboard, it was floating to the right. We put a margin on it, some padding on it. Uh, we can give it a background color. That's this background color right here. And then also we give this one a border radius and a box shadow as well. You'll notice uh, this box shadow is a little bit smaller than the one we had up here, which is seven. And you can see that because this is uh, has a little more prominent of a look here. This is a little thinner. Pretty straightforward, right? And then the last way to do it is just by simply referencing the element name itself. Here we're saying article, which means all of the articles on our page are going to look like this. Same thing. We use this as the background color. We have our border radius and our box shadow. So that's why CSS is awesome, because it's easy to work with. It's really just a matter of setting up your style sheet file and mapping your styles to classes, IDs, or elements inside of your HTML. Now, one other really nice thing about CSS is that there's a lot of generators out there that'll build all this stuff for you. And a lot of editors, like Visual Studio, for instance, have CSS style builders in them that'll help do most of this stuff for you. Then it's just a matter of tweaking what they did. And it's also a great way to learn this stuff, too, and learn many of the properties and their settings. So one uh, cool one I found, just Google CSS generator. You'll find a ton of them. But here's a really nice one that will help you style a box. So this will be good for menus and sections and articles and all that stuff. But here we can change the border radius. And look at it. It gives us a preview right there. Change the box shadow. We can uh, expand it here and give it a color, make it a nice pretty blue color there. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? Inset, you have full control over everything here. You can give it a gradient. Let's give it a neat little gradient here. How about green and uh, green and yellow? Look at that. Pretty cool. And then you can even give it a uh, transparency level here. And now hit get the code, and look at that. Here's all the code. <laughs> not, not too bad. And you can also scale it down. If you only want to support specific browsers, you can do it. If you want to support every browser, just check them all. It'll give us the uh, uh, code that's compatible with all the browsers. Now you can just hit select, copy it, and go test it out in your own world. In this CBT micro nugget, we learned what CSS is all about. We saw that it stands for cascading style sheets and it's a great way that we can separate our structure from our presentation. We saw that it's easy to apply by using selectors, which allows the browser to find exactly what styles apply to which elements inside of our structure. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.